Welcome. This is The 100 Club. I'm Tom, this is Ollie, and this is Rich. We're about to preview and assess the women's squad for the Northern Superchargers. Will they have that famous Western Terrace at Headingley jumping, or will it all go south for the women of the North? Find out with us. Rich, Ollie, good evening. How are you doing? Very well. I'm very well. How are you doing, Tom? I'm all right. Uh, it's Tuesday evening, and I'm fresh from just watching England B rack up their third victory against Pakistan in the third one-day international. That was a good game. I don't know if you, either of you caught it. I did. It was a fantastic game. Uh, England chased down 330-odd, and a few of the northern superchargers were involved. But that's a different video because we're doing the women's team now. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see any of the women's squad from the northern superchargers today. <laughs> Is it too rude to say, though, that their fielding would undoubtedly have outshone that of the Pakistan team today? I don't know. Probably irrelevant, I'm sure of that. Um, <laughs> It was a good game. Okay, so Northern Superchargers, though, um, they are playing pretty in purple. They are at the wonderful Headingley ground, but are they a winning team? Um, who are they going to rely on most? Rich, who have you picked out as the star? So I picked out as their star player, their captain, uh, Lauren Winfield-Hill. She is a very established uh, England player with central contract. Uh, she's been in the team for quite a while now. She was part of the 2017 World Cup winning squad. Um, like quite sadly, she was diagnosed with Crohn's disease a couple of years ago, and it was touch and go for a while whether she'd be able to carry on playing at top class, uh, top class sport. But fortunately, she sort of managed to get a handle on it and has been performing well for England in the one day side this this um, summer. Not part of the T20 setup at the minute, so I think she'll be looking at the hundred as an opportunity to really get herself back into the England T20 side. That's yeah. I mean, that's almost. The, the blue ribbon event for the England set up for the women's at the moment, because they do play that many more T20 games than the ODIs. Um, is she, has she featured for them before? Yeah, she's been involved in the past in the T20 side. So she's got a fairly, uh, fairly experienced in internationals, but as I've said, like not, not in the side at the minute. Yeah. Okay. And, um, uh, is there anyone else who's going to, who, who from the overseas stars has sort of caught your eye? Anyone in particular? Yeah, so they're three um, overseas players. They've got uh, a nice mix, actually. The young South Africa batter, Laura Volvart, who's um, been quite prolific over the last season. She had uh, over 600 runs in the 2019-20 winter uh, and you know followed that up with over 500 runs in the last winter, 2021, you know, averaging 46 one season, 31 the next. So, you know, That's she, she could certainly go well with the bat. Then, really excitingly, Jamoma Rodriguez, I'm wearing my India shirt today, uh, the young India player, again, a little bit out of form at the minute. She's currently dropped from the uh, T20 side and didn't feature in the last one uh, T20 international against England. But she really came on the scene in you know, 20, uh, 2019 when she scored 500 runs in, in 13 games and an average of nearly 60. So plenty of talent there. And I'm sure um, you know, she's just a knock or two away from finding it. And then yeah. the other one I'm really excited about is the uh, Australian uh, batter, Laura Kimmins. Um People might know her from uh, the Big Bash last year if they caught her uh, innings there. She, she scored 177 runs in the tournament at a strike rate of over 200. And there's some good videos on YouTube that I'd strongly recommend yes. you check out uh, yeah. showing her range hitting. In women's uh, T20, they often bring the boundary in a little bit. So you wonder sort of about the distances of some of these sixes. When it comes to Laura Kimmins, it doesn't matter how big the boundary rope is she's hitting into the stand so yeah very exciting player to watch i, I saw some of those you put, put me put me onto some of those videos and uh, yeah there was a couple where the camera was tracking around to try and follow the ball and by the end it was just heading off into trees around the ground you know the, she was hitting it out the park um yeah so i think uh, it's going to be very exciting to see her see her um sending it you know many rows back into the into the western terrace yeah, so beware if you're in there. Um, I'll, I'll link that video perhaps up, up there so uh, people can check it out because it is quite something. Um, very powerful, very um, clean hitting uh, around the ground for the in the Big Bash. Um, so uh, uh, what else have they got? What else have they got? Ollie, have you identified a youngster that you like on this team? Yeah, so um, uh, another 
another overseas player, but um, mm. but Dutch. So I'm guessing you know, kind of playing under kind of EU you know, settlement rules because he's been uh, been playing for the for the Northern Diamonds, and there's kind of a Northern Diamonds kind of backbone to to this side. Um, and um, she um, she's been playing in the um, the Rachel Hayhoe Flint um, sort of 50 over trophy last season, and um, and struggled uh, in the first first few games. I think she got three ducks in a row, which um, you know, would probably probably knock anyone's yeah. confidence, but not her. She kind of turned it around. Um, I think she made, made three scores over 50 in a row, and um, you know, kind of they got through to the through to the final of that competition. Um, lost. We're in talking the final. about we're talking about Stair Callis here, right? Yes. Yeah, so sorry, I'm not mentioning the name up front. we have been trying to do a mystery reveal. Yeah, stay calm. Yeah, who am I? <laughs> yeah. So, um, give him yeah, a jeopardy. She, yeah, so she kind of, you know, they lost that. Uh, they lost that game ultimately, but um, you know, kind of, she held the innings together. Got um, got fifty five, and then came in at number three, um, yeah. and kind of was there. You know, was the ninth wicket to fall, and kind of had to try and keep, you know, keep them vaguely on. You know, in the game, really, when kind of everyone was was kind of coming and going around her, so um, you know, she kind of clearly got her kind of got her confidence back by the end of the season. So um, you know, she's kind of got experience playing playing over here. She'd been known to the you know to the players in the, you know, in, the in the dressing room from her time at Northern Diamonds, but she's also had a bit of experience kind of around the world. You know, kind of not, I think, necessarily broken into you know kind of the playing squads at um, you know some of the big bash teams, but she's been out in Australia and kind of had you know experience part of those. Kind of those big leagues, so yeah, I think this could be um, you know this could be a good tournament for her to kind of get get lots of game time and kind of make her mark. Um, I think she was she's part kind of the, she was part of a developmental squad that uh, was uh, from Associate Nations that was playing mm. against some of the, uh, the teams out there, and and she's got a phenomenal record at international level. Now she is playing for well, the I was Netherlands. Say, the, the numbers stood out to me. Yeah, so when you look at what she's done on the international yeah. scene, it's. Um, She's, you know, it's, it, she's got some incredible scores. So uh, the one that really stands out is she made 126 uh, when she played for the Netherlands against uh, against Germany. And for a while, that was the that was the record record score in um, in a T T20 um, ODI. Now yeah. Alicia Healy and, and I think probably Meg Lanning have, have both gone past it uh, since. Um, but you know that it takes some doing kind of whatever the standard of opposition you know, you know, playing against you know germany rather than kind of one of the more established nations but even so you can only you, know, you can only put away what's what's served up and you know yeah. obviously if you're going to get 126 in an odi game then you, you're clearly doing that so i think um yeah she was the i think she was the associate um nominated for the associate cricketer of the decade um you know off the back of her kind of her, her scores kind of you know, the end of that period so yeah i think it'd be good for her to kind of have a really settled run in this squad and i think you know she could you know, she could be quite an important player in this team even though she's only 21. impressive to be player for the decade at the age of 21. where'd where you, where you go from there <laughs> oh, I thought, exactly. did, didn't we say rashid khan was also player of the decade uh for uh, associate icc player of the decade I, I forget but anyway he's about yeah, the same yeah this, I think it's, so it seems like decade, I think there's no barrier to winning these <laughs> player of the decade awards. So yeah. yeah. Um it's it's been quite a funny team, I think, in its in its um in, in its inception, actually, the Northern Supercharger for me. In in that and shout me down if you think I'm wrong, but I think this one somehow has attracted more uh contra controversy uh than others in terms of the regional focus of it because it's Durham and Yorkshire and Yorkshire being typically friendly and welcoming of outsiders <laughs> <laughs> I don't know somehow it doesn't seem to gel quite as naturally uh is that fair I have no idea what you're trying to well no, you know, I, I just, you're trying to paint of you know the the, you know, the welcoming county that is uh that is Yorkshire well it's, we it's good of you to call it a county at all rather than God's country or some such well I was considering that you know. yeah yeah but well, I think I think it's been I think it's been quite accommodating of Yorkshire. If you look at, yeah. um, you know, the branding of it, it's the Northern Superchargers. It's not related to Leeds or anything like yeah. that. Um, the, the, you know, the, even the colours are fairly neutral. You compare that, say, to Oval Invincibles, which is sort of a, an amalgamation of two old rivals in Surrey and Kent. But you know, it was a very strong Surrey footprint on that on that mm -hmm. franchise. So actually, maybe I think Durham have probably got a good deal out of the Northern Superchargers. I'd say. Yeah. Well, if you get if you look across the Pennines at our you know uh, friends <laughs> on the other side of the, the big hills, um, 
you know, one way to try and win the appeal of cricket lovers in Liverpool is to uh, is to whack Manchester on the name of that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just as an aside, do either of you know what a supercharger is? Uh, is it? It's not a uh, question. I don't. <laughs> Is it a phone charging cable actually works every time? <laughs> I don't know. Is it some kind it, of meteorological event? Maybe it's a phone charger that will work on both a Samsung and an Apple. Surely, that, that really is super. <laughs> well, if Yorkshire have discovered the secret to that, then they're probably keeping it to themselves. Yeah, um, maybe they are. But the reason, one of the reasons why I mentioned the sort of the, the, the geographical thing here is because I think they've made a really smart move in their coach, who's Daniel Hazel. Um, she's only 33 and relatively recently retired as an England international, all format England duties, uh, I think it was January 2019. Um, World Cup winner, twice the Ashes winner. So, you know, very well respected as a player. But absolutely, I, it seems to me like she's on the on the, on the the escalator up to the top echelons of the women's game in, in the country. So she's um, with the Yorkshire Diamonds now, the Northern Diamonds. But actually, I think was born in C County Durham sort of boat bridges that that element as well mm -hmm. um and often feels like and has been quoted as saying yorkshire is her second home so great fine all familiar with the northern diamonds as well um and i think we'll see her do quite interesting things i think there's only three women's coaches in the in the tournament as a whole so we hope that they would do very well um and certainly in the first rachel rachel hayho flint ODI trophy in 2020 um, got to the final when they mm -hmm. lost to the Southern Vipers. So, you know, doing all right. And again, I think they're at a 75% win rate in this year's tournament as well. So uh, big hopes for how she, she gets a hold of this team. Um, okay. It's, it's my pleasure though, to do the selecting today. So you're going to pick your best 11s and we'll see how much agreement there is after the shambolic effort that we put together for the Welsh fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ollie, you get first dibs. Yeah. Who's your opening partnership? Well, so opening partnerships are you know sort of traditionally formed of of two batters, aren't they? Mm. But that um, usually, yeah. yeah, yeah, usually that's the way it kind of normally works. But um, what are you plotting? What, so, so I'm going a little bit differently because I th when I put oh, this is this another together, new rule for the hundred? It's, it's, <laughs> is there going to be three it's, openers? It's, uh, oh, that that would have made life easy for me if I could have had three openers. Now, I think I've actually got at least five, if not six, possible okay. openers in my in my eleven. So, um, so it, it's a it's a very deep opening partnership in the dip bats down down the order. Okay. Um, I am going to make you commit to two of them. Yeah, yeah. So I know who's going to. I know who's opening first. Okay, but then I've got another three openers to come in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open with the um, the Northern Diamonds opening opening pair because you know they've they've been been going well. I think you've sort of established a good relationship. So some, some names anytime you like. Some Lauren Winfield Hill and <laughs> Holly Armitage <laughs> are going to open for me. So okay, um, you know all all the best opening batsmen come from York. So. Lauren Winfield Hill has to has to be in there, uh, and you know she's got a got a good relationship uh, with Holly Armitage, uh, who I think is described on the hundred website uh, as being and has described herself as being ultra northern, and uh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I think I've okay. lost all claims to being ultra northern. You know, we moved to London yeah. Yeah. decades ago, but yeah, and, so have those, you got to come back happen. on that one, Rich? Um. I was I was going to open with Alice Davidson Richards. Um, she's been doing that job for the South East Stars. You know, twenty seven year old all rounder. She's been in and around England squads for the last few years. Um, she knows the Yorkshire Diamonds very well because I think she went to university in Leeds and, and played for them for four years before coming back down south. Um, so I actually had her ahead of Armitage in my lineup. Okay. Where did you have Alice uh, Davidson Richards, Ollie? So I had a I had her in at four. Um, when I did the first cut of this, she yeah. um, she wasn't necessarily going to be in the squad. But then I realised I didn't have enough um, really enough seam bowling options. And actually, she's you know she's a very good um, you know right arm fast medium. So she's kind of in in my squad as an as an all rounder. And I probably would have her have her at three, but possibly you know, push her up the order if there's um, if there's a wicket goes down in the uh, in the power play. 
Okay. Um, but I had to, I was going to put Laura um, or Wolfhart at um, three in my sort of fairly flexible array of opening batsmen. Excuse me. Um, what are the numbers like for Laura Wolfhart? How powerful are we talking the strike rates and stuff like that? Anyone got that to hand? Yeah, strike rate for Laura Volvar in key back, key competitions at 105. Okay. But so, Rodrigues is at 120 yeah. in by the same metric. So I had Rodrigues at three, Volvar at four, and then Kimmins comes in at five. Kimmins um, strikes at nearly 150, which is about as good as you get in the women's game. Yeah. And then I had I had Callis then coming in at six. That was my sort of lineup. Okay, well, I'll throw them all up for now. Um, Ollie, any comebacks on, on the ordering there? Uh, no, that is pretty much, I think, what what I had. Okay, well, let's leave leave it as as that because I like the argument about getting a bit of decent um, fast bowling option from Alison Alice Davidson Richards somewhere in there. We'll argue about the batting order maybe in a bit, but. Um, uh, but most what, most of those players, player. possibly with the <laughs> exception of um, Gibbons, could open <laughs> and have opened, you yeah. know, in recent times. So, um, well, so yeah, there be, should be no, there should be yeah, there should, yeah, there should be no um, no quaking in the boots if a, if a wicket goes out early because they're then queuing up for going. <laughs> okay, but I'm happy with Winfield Hill and Armitage. I like a, an opening pair that have played together. A decent amount have a bit of um, understanding that makes sense to me so let's stick with the uh the northern diamonds option there i'll, I'll, I'll work out the rest in a minute who, who we got in the bowling attack rich what have you got so if you're going to have um so i had armitage coming in at seven as sort of batting insurance plus she she bowls a little bit leg spin um but i would guess you could swap her around davis richards so if you had davis and richards in the seven slot so then i had beth langston coming in at eight as a pace bowling option then I had, um, well, I'll tell you what, at 10, I had Lindsay Smith, who's sort of been in around England squads, last played a T20 international back in 2019, and uh, Phoebe Graham the, uh, as, as my other um, polling option at 11. And then that gives you the tricky situation because then you have Katie Levick, who is one of the highest wicket takers in women's des uh, domestic cricket uh, over the last decade, and she's a leg break bowler. But they yeah. have a very exciting young spinner in their squad in Kalea Moore, um, who has already taken sort of 12 wickets in T20 this year, three in the Charlotte Edwards Cup, and yeah. is an 18 year old off spinner. So I've actually put Kalea Moore into the side, head, head of Levick, and that's how I've lined them up. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I considered that, uh, but I went with Levick. I kind of thought, start this tournament with a bit of experience. And, uh, in the spin bowling department. So I okay. started with Levick. Um, I kind of want both. Um, so I might come back to that. What have you left on the bench there in Campbell, Fenby and Heath? Is that is that uh, the youth development option? What, what, what are we... I've left, so, so Beth Heath is the only nominated wicketkeeper in the squad, but Lauren Winfield-Hill does keep. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a keeping in my side. And then Fenby is a young... Uh, she's another leg break bowler. Um, so probably comes in behind um, Levick if you're going to choose one of the two. She's sort of backup spin option. And then Amy Campbell is a left-handed batter, quite experienced. Um, she's just doesn't have the, sort of the, uh, the strike rate as some of those other ones do and, and doesn't have really experience in the big competition with the KSL or, or, or the Big Bash. So I think that's why she sort of comes in. It was a backup in my squad. Okay. Um, we've got a healthy 12, as usual at this point. Um, I, uh, What is Callie Moore's batting figures like? Do you have those to hand as well, Rich? Yeah, so in... I'm saying she's a bat and bowl on, on the 100 website, so... So in all T20, so this includes sort of uh, county the rest, she's played um, you know, 14 games by the figures I have, high score of 20, averaging just under 10. Lever Levick in 88 games, averaging just under 4, so... Okay. Neither, neither are stellar with the bats. I think. You know, yeah, it was quite an interesting choice to give her the um, give her a bat as a prop. I thought. In the, in the, <laughs> yeah. The yeah, but what did you say? Nineteen years old. Maybe they've seen, maybe they know something that we don't. Maybe yeah, um, they've, they've seen in the nets. So yeah. the question for me here then is: Are we having uh, 
six proper batting options or seven, I think. And what do I want? Um, so I am tempted to have both Moore and Levick and possibly... I, uh, I guess if you want... Can I drop a faster bowler? Spinners, you could... We could take what? out Phoebe Graham. Yeah. You want if you got? felt like you had enough pace options. Taylor yeah, and Beth Langston tend to open the bowling. Um, yeah. You've well, got Lindsay, Richardson, ball ball that role. But Lindsay yes. Smith is right, is great quality. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's proven it. So, okay. Let's, 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 let's take the youngster out at this point, Callie Moore. Uh, that's an off break bowler. I think we can probably work around that. Um, the, yeah, I'm, I think then you've got you've got to have seven popper bats. I think in that in in this format. Okay. Anyone want to disagree with that? No, I suppose. Um, so there's one thing to consider is if you come up if you've got a matchup against a team with um, a lot of left-handers, you might want. Um, that's where you might want to put uh, put more back in. Um, yep. You know, moving it away from the uh, away from the left-handers. Working the yep. rough outside this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'll save that one to file for now. Um, what uh, what do we think of the squad as a whole? So that was Winfield Hill, Armitage, Davidson, Richards, Rodrigues, Volfart, Kimmins, Callis, Langston, Levick, Smith, and Graham as our starting eleven. What well, were your impressions uh, when he went through it? I mean, challenges. Well, well I, th I think if you if you think that it's a you know, core of the squad is in that Northern Diamond side that. Um, you know, it was, it was doing well domestically. Um, and then you kind of look at what you've added to it from overseas mm. players. Then I think, you know, that the, it, the overseas players strengthened the side, you know, on top of what was, a, you know, pretty good core of players to start with. So for me, that makes it a pretty strong, strong setup. And the fact that we've kind of been, you know, sort of kicking around who to, you know, who to put in and we've kind of put some, you know, pretty, pretty good names on the, on the bench means that I yeah, think yeah. they could be a good side and they could go I th well. I think, I think they want bit... to... Sorry, go Tom. on, Rich. Sorry, no, go on. I was going to say, just being slightly objective, if I look at it um, based on form this season or competitions, they have the third highest batting average in the competition, um, but the second highest economy rate. So that suggests to me fairly loaded batting lineup, but perhaps we worry about the bowling in touch. Yeah, I think I'll agree with that. I think I want to see uh, Rodrigues hit some form. If they can do that, mm. then they could be in the top three. Uh, otherwise, you know, I just wonder whether the the, uh, the bowling will keep up, given what we've shown. Okay, mm. that was a real uh, eye-opener for me. Thank you very much. Um, we will be back again pretty soon with the Northern Superchargers men's squad. Um, any sort of... Uh, closing comments? How, are, we, are we digging the purple pop chips? Mm. I'm quite a fan of purple. I think it's a, yeah. a nice striking colour for a cricket kit. Okay. I'm not sure about pop chips, though. They might be the yeah, weakest. I don't know whether they're really a pub snack, are they? No. no we're going to do this video properly, and we're going to get all eight for the snacks. It's going to be, <laughs> yeah, we it's going to be a snack off. <laughs> we're, going to, yeah. we're, going to, we're going to put this to bed once and for all. Mm. We might need to. It's not the, the main point. The main point is they're a decent team. We, uh, we, we want to see them challenging for a top three, if not a, a winning slot. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will be back again with the men's squad real soon. If you oh, enjoyed wait. that, oh, go on. I have, on one, I have a question at the end. Ollie, well, uh, have you decided? Have you? This is our last preview show. Mm. This is all, all eight teams. Are we, in the next episode, are we going to get your uh, the team you're following? We are. <laughs> Interesting. Are we doing yeah. that? In the preview show, or the... I don't know. I'm not sure it warrants its own show, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hadn't sort of... I haven't planned sort of a big, yeah. like, walk-on like music, you know, jump out of a cake kind of reveal. <laughs> oh, damn it. I'd arrange to uh, put it on... Unless you, unless you know otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll 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 put the phone down to Graham Norton doing the announcements. Um, okay, stop it. We'll uh, we'll be back real soon with the next profile. That'll be the Northern Superchargers men. If you've enjoyed that, please let us know with a subscribe, a like, and a comment down below. Until then, thank you very much. Take care. Bye. -bye.